In Saudi Arabia in 1988, two South Korean men, Dongwook and Jun Ji-i, were driving a car on a stretch of desert. They drive the car very recklessly. As it turns out, Dongwook is a former professional racer who turned into a courier for illegal goods. Like now, he delivered hundreds of long-barreled weapons belonging to the mystery in order to get a lot of money. After running several illegal businesses overseas, Dongwook and Jun Ji-i finally returned to South Korea. But while they were chatting with their friend, Bok Nam, suddenly a group of men wearing suits arrived. Dongwook, feeling restless, decides to leave immediately. Long story short, they arrived at a car modification workshop, called Banku. This place is also their base camp. There, Yoon Hee, Dongwook's sister, and a DJ named John Woo. But when they were unwinding and telling each other's experiences after a long time of not seeing each other, they were surprised by the arrival of several people. They were the group of men in suits who had appeared at the airport earlier. Inevitably, Dongwook meets the people so as not to prolong the problem. It turns out that the group was led by Prosecutor On. Prosecutor On has investigated the criminal cases of Dongwook and his friends, ranging from major crimes such as illegal delivery of goods, even to minor crimes such as Bok Nam who's never paid taxes as taxi driver, Yoon Hee doing car modifications and violating traffic, and much more. Even so, Prosecutor On's purpose in coming there is not to arrest them, but to invite them to cooperate because he is facing a bigger problem. So, there is a rich businesswoman. She is chairwoman Kang Yun Suk, who is suspected of having committed money laundering acts from the previous government. She was someone who had very strong power, so Prosecutor On couldn't face her bluntly. That's why he asked Dong Wook for help on a secret mission. Currently, chairwoman Kang is looking for a courier to deliver illegal money laundering goods. Of course, these items have a very fantastic price. Therefore, chairwoman Kang will be very selective in choosing her new courier, by holding a wild racing competition. Because Dong Wook and his friends have these skills, they are asked to join to register as Chairwoman Kang's couriers. The goal is that the prosecutor's office can spy on her more closely, as well as collect valid evidence that can lead to her being sent to prison. In addition, Prosecutor On offers quite an attractive reward. He will erase all of Dong Wook and his friends' criminal records if they manage to get hold of Chairwoman Kang's account book. Because the book is valid evidence of money laundering. Long story short, Don Wook agreed to the offer and started to prepare some things for tomorrow's race. Don Wook modifies the car so that it can go faster and determine the fastest route he will take. And finally, the fateful day arrived. On a city street, it looks like the racers are getting ready at the starting line. They are professional racers. There, Don Wook also meets his enemy, Gal Chi, who will also be participating in the wild race. The rules for this wild race are very simple. The participants were only asked to deliver a circular object to a predetermined place. They are free to determine their respective routes, they are even allowed to knock each other down. Not long after, after the rules were declared, the race finally started. Dongwook drove his car very skillfully even though at that time, the city streets were busy with people. When he entered the village area, he managed to push an opponent until he hit a house. And from here, Dongwook goes crazy for turning the wheel. He took a shortcut by passing through the campus area, passing a super narrow alley that was being used by residents for activities, then returned to the highway and hit a car. Then, when Dong Wook has to face off against one of his toughest enemies, it's a shame that his car gets stuck. Luckily, Yoon Hee came to help. Yoon Hee disguises herself as a traffic officer. She stopped the enemy cars to buy time while making their tires punctured. In the end, Dong Wook managed to reach the destination earlier than the other participants. It turns out, the finish point of the race is a luxurious office belonging to Chairwoman Kong. Long story short, Yuni also followed to the office. Then, they were taken to a bar which was also in the office to meet Chairwoman Kong. There, John Wu appears and disguises himself as a disc jockey. Without further ado, Chairwoman Kong immediately explains that Don Wook will be given the task of sending goods 10 times, in exchange for 10 million won in each shipment. The nominal amount is very large but President Director Kong also provides some strict regulations, such as not being allowed to open the package during delivery, not being allowed to divulge information related to package delivery to anyone, and making deliveries as perfect as possible. Because if something goes wrong, then her right hand, Director Lee, will give them a severe punishment. Dong Wook agrees to the rules. On their way home, they are confronted by Director Lee, who confirms that even though Chairwoman Kong has full trust in them, he will continue to monitor and is always ready to give punishment if something goes wrong. As it turns out, Director Lee is a fierce person, as he used to be a major in the Defense Security Command. At the same time, Dong Wook's car is burned in front of his eyes. 
lightly, Director Lee asked them to find another car that is more capable. Dong Wook and his friends are still emotional because his car has been set on fire. But the next day, they are happy, because Prosecutor On provides a car facility that will be used in the next mission. They can take three cars home at once. Afterwards, Prosecutor On's co-worker, Prosecutor Young, warns Prosecutor On to be more careful in handling the money laundering case by Chairwoman Kong. Long story short, before the first shipment began, Dong Wook and his friends made modifications to the car they got from Prosecutor On. The first day arrives for Dong Wook to deliver a package from Chairwoman Kong. Dong Wook receives several packages while at the station. Then, the package was delivered to Chairwoman Kang's office. Then, for the second, third, fourth, and fifth deliveries, they still did the same thing, picking up packages from somewhere and delivering them to Chairwoman Kang's office. Even though their struggle is not always smooth, because they often run into the police, Dong Wook and his friends are still able to complete the task well. Meanwhile, John Wu has begun to get close to Chairwoman Kong and her secretary, Kim. His disguise as a DJ in the luxury office made rapid progress. This makes Prosecutor On quite proud, but he also always warns them to be careful. Director Lee who behaved viciously also became a threat to them. John Wu also provided information if he saw many antiques hidden in the previous delivery package. Most likely, these objects are the result of money laundering conducted by Chairwoman Kong all this time. The next day, Don Wook and his friends are asked to come to a temple. At the temple, there is a pile of money belonging to Chairwoman Kong, which is approximately 50 billion won. Later, they will be asked to take all the money from this hiding place as a final mission. Long story short, they return to continue the job desk as couriers as usual, and everything went smoothly without any problems. As time goes by, their lives become more prosperous than before. Thanks to Chairwoman Kang's large fee. They even bought a luxury apartment as a bonus. Until one day, the fun moments turned into tense. It all started when Yoon Hee and Bok Nam went to the show concert, in connection with the holding of the Summer Olympics by South Korea which was attended by many countries. But after a few hours, Dong Wook still hasn't heard from them. Even though at that time, they had a package delivery schedule. As a result, Dong Wook is forced to carry out this task with Jin Ji Ai. When on the way to the destination, suddenly his car was flanked by two suspicious trucks. So Dong Wook decides to leave the two trucks. But when passing a sharp bend, unexpectedly, there was a car that was blocking. Turns out, the culprit behind this mess is Director Lee. He even kidnapped Yoon Hee and Bok Nam. So, the purpose of Director Lee doing all this is because he knows that Dong Wook and his friends have leaked information regarding the delivery packages to someone. Then, he threatens to shoot Yoon Hee in the head if they don't open up about the reason for leaking the information. But despite being questioned many times, none of them wanted to confess. Until finally, Dong Wook was willing to sacrifice himself to be shot. But unexpectedly, it turns out that Director Lee is just doing a test to make sure that Dong Wook and friends still follow the rules at the beginning, which is not to leak information to anyone. And fortunately, they were still able to refrain from giving out any information. On the other hand, John Woo's relationship with Secretary Kim was getting closer. Even on one occasion, they slept together and chatted. But John Woo's main goal is not just to make love, but he wants to duplicate a key which is access to Chairwoman Kang's private room. But unfortunately, even though John Woo managed to get a copy of the key, at the same time Dong Wook decided to quit this mission. Because if they continue, their lives will be in danger. As a result, there was a bit of a fight between them. Until finally, they decided to go their separate ways. The next day, John Wu, Yoon Hee, Bok Nam, and Jun Ji Ai come to see Prosecutor On. They say they will continue the mission even without Dong Wook. The main goal this time was to take President Director Kang's account book which was in a private room in her office. They will use the duplicate keys to enter the room. As explained earlier, if the account book will be the main evidence to drag money launderers into prison, Yoon Hee disguises herself as an office janitor. While John Wu is in charge of distracting the guards there by pretending that his DJ machine is broken. So that when the guards are kept busy by him, Yoon Hee can freely enter Chairwoman Kang's private room, which happens to be empty at the time. Long story short, the account book was found. But alas, Yoon Hee's suspicious movements attract the attention of other employees. So, Yoon Hee is chased by the officials. In the end, Dong Wook appears to save Yoon Hee. Meanwhile, on the other hand, John Wu managed to distract President Kong who had just arrived at the office, as if nothing had happened. When it was getting late, Dong Wook met up with his friends again. He had decided to continue this mission to the end. While in another place, Chairwoman Kong has learned of the theft of her account book. 
John Wu and Dong Wook go to Prosecutor An's office to hand over Chairwoman Kang's account book. But there, they found a messy room, like it had been ransacked. When they were about to leave, they heard someone screaming. As a result, John Wu decided to check it out. While Dong Wook is asked to get ready in the car. But only a few meters away, suddenly Prosecutor An is seen being thrown from the top of the building, which makes him die instantly. And not long after, there was a scream from John Wu who was being chased by some gangsters. So Dong Wook rushes to get the car keys from Prosecutor On and is forced to leave the place alone. If the two of them were caught together, then things could get even worse. But as it turned out, the problems didn't stop there. The next day, Dong Wook and his friends are shocked when they find their workshop burned down. All this is the work of Director Lee. While trying to calm down somewhere, they suddenly see a news story on TV stating that Dong Wook is the perpetrator of Prosecutor On's murder. It was certain that the fake news was Director Lee's fabrication. While on the other hand, John Wu is being tortured and forced to talk about the whereabouts of Chairwoman Kang's account book. He was also shown the body parts of Secretary Kim who had been mutilated due to her negligence in carrying out her duties. But despite getting various kinds of persecution as well as mental attacks, John Wu didn't want to open his mouth at all. On the other hand, Dong Wook gets a lead in Prosecutor On's car. At that time, he wanted to refresh his mind by listening to a song. It turned out that the tape contained Chairwoman Kang's talk which could later be used as evidence. From here, Don Wook's hope and courage re-emerged. Until finally, he meets Prosecutor An's co-worker, Prosecutor Young, to continue handling the money laundering case by Chairwoman Kong. Some valid evidence such as a copy of the account book as well as a tape recording. Although persuading Prosecutor Young is very difficult, since he didn't want to get involved in the case from the start. Elsewhere, Dong Wook is still trying to find other evidence by spying on the meeting between Chairwoman Kong and Director Lee. It turns out that Chairwoman Kong has a plan to run away from South Korea with all the money. She did this to avoid the worst situation, because lately the situation is getting out of control. Until one day, Dong Wook and Jun Ji ventured to meet Director Lee. Dong Wook's purpose in coming is not to fight, but to reveal a big secret, the secret about Chairwoman Kang's plans that had been hidden from Director Lee. But before revealing it, Dong Wook had asked one thing. Director Lee, feeling extremely curious, agreed. Later, Dong Wook plays a tape from the tape he found in Prosecutor An's car. It turns out to be a voice recording of Chairwoman Kong who said that she wanted to sacrifice Director Lee for the money laundering case. So before Prosecutor An died, he did send several people to wiretap Chairwoman Kong. And the recording is the result. Feeling betrayed by his own superiors, Director Lee feels mad. Director Lee's madness is used by Dong Wook to invite cooperation. He offered to help to get away the remaining money that was still in the temple. Dong Wook insists that the offer is worth it, because in addition to Director Lee getting rich, he will also be helped to escape from the police. Because currently, there is another prosecutor who is continuing his investigation into the money laundering case. The next day, Dong Wook comes to see Gao Chi for help. He was going to borrow Gao Chi's workshop one day in advance, in order to prepare a grand plan. Although at first Gao Chi had refused, he finally changed his mind after being offered an attractive gift. As a result, now Dong Wook and his friends have a temporary shelter to make preparations. The preparations involved modifying the car with new looks and parts, and they also devised a strategy known as the Soul Vibe. Meanwhile, at the temple, Director Lee is preparing some money to be taken away. Although the number was not as much as at the beginning, because most of it had been transported by Chairwoman Kong, it was more than enough to prosper his life for years to come. Long story short, the Day of Determination coincided with the Summer Olympics Games event in South Korea. Here, we can see Chairwoman Kong transferring most of her money onto the plane, while waiting for the rest to be at the temple. She didn't know that in fact, Director Lee was about to take the rest of the money away. Several boxes of money are loaded into Don Wook's car then begins the journey to the port of Incheon, where Director Lee will depart from South Korea by boat. While at the same time, Yoon Hee managed to save John Woo easily. Later, Jun Ji Ai shoots flares from the riverbank aiming to provide information that John Woo has been rescued, so that Don Woo can move on to the next stage of the strategy. First, he dropped Director Lee's men from his car after that he left the group. Not long after, Bok Nam suddenly appeared to help by blocking the gangster's car. But even though Dong Wook managed to get away from the group, unfortunately Bok Nam's car overturned because it was hit from the side. 
The chase continues at the Summer Olympics parade. This time, Don Wook gets help from Gao Chi who is holding the smoke machine. He shoots so much smoke at Director Lee's car that it blocks his movement. But despite being blocked many times, it seems the director is still pursuing it. He even fired a few shots. Bok Nam was already completely weakened from the previous collision. Plus, he also saw an electric spark that could set his car on fire. Fortunately, not long after, John Wu came up with a pretty epic driving style. He helped Bok Nam at the right time. On the other hand, Yoon Hee and her motorcycle gang members try to block Chairwoman Kang's vision with the die thrown on the windshield, so that Dong Wook's movement becomes more flexible. Long story short, Dong Wook finally arrived at the airport. His car, which carried several wooden boxes, was also noticed by Chairwoman Kong. Chairwoman Kong thought that the car had indeed delivered her money, because Director Lee's car was following behind. But the fierce chase between Director Lee and Dong Wook still continues while Yoon Hee and Jun Ji are accompanied. Until on one occasion, John Wu suddenly hit the director's car from the side so hard that it made him bounce and hit the road divider. Later, when Prosecutor Young arrives at the crime scene to secure Director Lee, his car explodes. Back on the mission, it appears Don Wook is trying to get into Chairwoman Kang's plane which is in a takeoff position. Chairwoman Kong deliberately opened the back door of her plane, because to her knowledge, the car was indeed assigned to deliver some of the money from the temple. But then, she was shocked, confused, and annoyed. She just found out that the person in the car was Dongwook who had betrayed. Chairwoman Kong immediately vented her anger on Dongwook while saying a few sentences that actually exposed all her own disgrace. In fact, at that time, Dongwook had put a hidden camera in the back of his car, so that all the words and behavior of this woman can be recorded clearly. After gathering the evidence from the tape, Don Wook immediately leaves from there. He rushed to open the back door of the plane and hooked the back of the car into all of Chairwoman Kang's pile of money. Then, he plunged. It turns out that Don Wook had set up several large parachutes in his car. As a result, Don Wook managed to survive the tense incident. The victory was sweet, while Chairwoman Kang's money fell from the sky. A few days later, Chairwoman Kang was arrested by the police for money laundering cases worth 50 billion won. Thanks to the hard work of Don Wook and his friends in gathering evidence of the crime so far. Until one day, after visiting Prosecutor On's grave, unexpectedly, it turns out that Don Wook had taken some money while on a previous mission. And of course, their lives will be made prosperous with the money. <laughs>